Hello, everybody. We're the Skeleton Crew. We're coming to you tonight with the Jurassic World Evolution 2 video. Finally, it's been a while since we've recorded one of these. Uh, you'll notice we're missing one of our members. I'm filling in for Dr. James Napoli. Uh, I've actually consumed him in a fit of rage. Uh, and I have his opinions and his thoughts and everything he thinks about everything now lives in my head. Um, I'm so sorry. Everything, all, all the opinions that I share are also shared by Dr. James Napoli. Um, and you can take that to the bank. Uh, so before we dive on in, we'll, we're going to reintroduce ourselves. And I guess I'll start. I'll mess up the order because now I'm in charge and it's my ship. I am not Dr. Alexander Altieri Rubenstahl. I'm a PhD candidate at Yale University and also the king of this now. <laughs> uh, my name is Amit. Oh, sorry. I just said all hail. Sorry, go on. All hail. I, I won't hail. I'm sorry. Um, my name is Amelia Zietlow. I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History. My name is Scott Robert Johnston, the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology. Huzzah. And I am Dalton Lee Meyer, a PhD candidate at Yale University. And together... We're, We're the, the skeleton, skeleton crew. crew. Not even four. Couldn't do it with one. That's fine. No. That was now perfect. Today. That was literally perfectly in time for me. God, that was awful. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> now, Let's today we come... Your latency. Sorry, Scott. We're coming in, coming today with, our, I think, our first Allosaur, right? This is the we first... We are, but before... Oh, no, we don't have to preface this about the stream because this episode will be after. We'll be after. So, this oh. is the part where we can cut in the amount of money that we raised. Look and... how much. Wow. Oh, thank you all. So wow. Much. That sure wow. is a lot of money. Look at it all. Wow. Yes. Really love the game. <laughs> very well. Thank you. Actually, it's going to be over the line. If, 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 no, if, no, if, no. We, if it was you, complete that. failure, we'll also have our. We're very disappointed with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> could have done better. Not us, you. Congratulations to Alex Look, being our only donor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can Photoshop it in. Now, Dalton, do you want to? You want to? Are we seeing how these creatures come into the world, or have they already come into the world? Uh, we're we're bringing some in, as always. Oh yes, uh, today's <laughs> the animal of the week is uh, Carcharodontosaurus. Indeed. What does this name mean, friends? Just a second. I I know that we I know we we need to talk about the name and everything. I just one of my favorite features of the this animal in this game is it makes such good noises and I love them so much and I love that entry scream thing it does. But okay. well, its name was... its name means the shark tooth lizard to answer your question. Oh, really? And what about its species name? You mean Saharicus? Which well, species? Now, There's two. The how, the one that I know, which is Saharicus. <laughs> <laughs> You're going, dear audience, you'll find that we don't, this is not an immediate group of study for any of us. Uh, the it, theropods I work on are small and weird and birdy, and the theropods Jimbo work on are the ones eight-year-olds care about. And no one else works on theropods in, the, in here. <laughs> so, we've done a little bit of research to bring you optimum content. Yes. I hope. Because it's rough out here, guys. We're trying to make ends meet. Now, <laughs> we're doing now, our best. Scott, you had something positive to say about this creature. Yeah. I, I love the sounds it makes. I, I remember one of the uh, one of the most distinctive features about Carcharodontosaurus in the previous game, well, not even the previous game, in the game that this series is a spiritual successor of, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, which Alex seems to think of this game. Uh, I'm sure a series of, of, of cuts of me f***ing up the introduction will be layered here, where I keep saying Operation Genesis. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, it's the Skeleton Crew. We're excited to get back to you with our Jurassic Park op. Uh, no, I'll get someone else to do this. I can't do it. We're doing Jurassic Park operation. Oh uh, no, 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 no! I just want to call it Operation <laughs> JPOG. Would you like someone else to do it? Alex? No, I've committed. 
but uh, JPOG was one of the first games to like, or one of the first things to really introduce Carcharodontosaurus to me. Besides, I had this like little plastic toy that was like the weirdest, right. ugliest bastard that I've ever seen. It was like orange and green and awful. But, Audience, um, and remember that Scott is an illiterate and he would have been unable to read. He, he couldn't read about it first. He I had couldn't. to see it in a video no. game. Oh, yeah. It was insane. I only learn about things if they're in a video game first. Um, but I thought it was really interesting that uh, in Operation Genesis, uh, Karkar Dantosaurus was the only like dinosaur that didn't roar. Uh, it just like hissed. It was really weird and memorable. Uh, also, the and colors kicked ass. Also, the colors kicked ass. Yeah. There was a lot of there. Now that I think about it, there was a lot of white, black, and red in Jurassic Park. Oh, Operation it, it was the most like two thousands color scheme. Mm -hmm. It was that. It was Hamalocephale. It was uh, Velociraptor. Yeah. Yeah. Like it should have. It should have emerged from the hatchery to like Lincoln Park. Oh, it should have. Well, speaking of firsts, this is not just our first Allosaur. This is also our first of the Stromer dinos. Wow. Okay. Wow. So and also possibly our first African dinosaur. Um, unless well, I'm trying to remember because Barbara Dactylus is African, and that is. But we don't. Do we, we haven't featured that one yet. No. We, if you're very generous and you consider Centaurus, Seal of yeah, I'm Cilof. not. I'm not that generous. Then yes, this is our first African dinosaur. Uh, a bit of a history lesson about Carcharodontosaurus. Uh, I would so, like this. Like many of the specimens that were described by Ernst Stromer, a German paleontologist um, who did a lot of work in Africa and on fossils from Africa, um, this dinosaur was destroyed <laughs> in World War II, uh, along with the holotype of Spinosaurus. Um, it was named for teeth first. So, so as its name implies. Carcharodontosaurus has uh, distinctive teeth, and that holds true for the whole group of Carcharodontosaurs. They have similar teeth, so some teeth were named Megalosaurus saharicus, mm -hmm. um, and those were, I believe, from Algeria. And then Stromer in the Egyptian... Uh, is it Baharaya? Is that how you say it? Um, I thought it was Baharaya. I have no idea. <laughs> I've always, or I've always heard it as Baharia. This um, what this what this series is making me aware of is how how few times I've said any of these names out loud or any yeah. information <laughs> names out loud. Um, but so Stromer was working on a lot of Egyptian fossils from the Baharia formation uh, and found uh, a partial skull and some other bones of an animal that had the same kind of teeth as this Megalosaurus saharicus, and and he was like, oh, this is the uh, same animal, and. Before I continue, I want to make sure that Scott isn't frozen. No, he's not frozen. So Dalton, oh, would you say at this me. point... <laughs> it was frozen for me, and I was like, oh no, it's all coming undone. Um, Dalton, at this point, would you say, with the referral to, to the genus Megalosaurus, that theropod uh, systematics was, was crude? <laughs> it was real crude. It was real crude. Um, they put me in a wastebasket taxon. You ever heard of a wastebasket taxon? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Stromer's like, oh, this isn't Megalosaurus. It should be its own thing. And he, he reassigns it to a new genus, Carcharodontosaurus, um, which is something I didn't know about until researching this episode, that the that Carcharodontosaurus saharicus was like retroactively assigned to a tooth taxon. Um, but then it becomes this Egyptian dinosaur that, either. that has a holotype, hmm. a, a, probably a decent and diagnostic holotype. We'll not know for sure because it's uh, crumbled to dust and ruined. Um, I and think you mean it was obliterated. Way. Yeah. Urged in glorious allied fire. <laughs> oh dear. But then in uh, 1995, a very, very important year in paleontology, possibly the most important year in paleontology. I don't know. I think I 94 born. is pretty cool. Oh, I think uh, 96 is kind of more important. And it coincides with Sinistropic, so. Sorry, what were you saying, Alex? No, I was just saying my birthday was more important. Because oh, I was sure. born when they. Uh, described the first feathered dinosaur. So, I was born during Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx, my guy. It's a bird. No one cares. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> oh yeah. So it being, you know, it, it being present uh, for a hundred years, that that really, there were no questions or contention about the dinosaur nature of the bird connection, right? A, I'm just saying you're wrong. 
I'm just saying you can. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, all this, all this hemming and hawing is ignoring the, the 1995 supremacy in which Paul Serino and colleagues went to Morocco and were uncovering fossils and they found an animal that looks like the Egyptian Carcharodontosaurus. And in 2007, they erect it as the neotype. That's Brusati and Paul Serino, Steve Brusati and Paul Serino. They erect the, this Moroccan specimen as the neotype of Carcharodontosaurus saharicus. Um, so there will be inevitably some debate online as surrounds almost all of the material that is posited to be in both Egypt and Morocco that are these actually the same? Is this a like justified neotype or not? I have no skin in this game. I don't know enough about Carcharodontosaurus to say. Suffice it to say, I trust the literature and I, I don't think it's unreasonable that this is now the Sereno specimen, the, the Morocco specimen, should be what we consider Carcharodontosaurus saharicus. And, you know, if they find more stuff in Egypt and it turns out to be very different, maybe the best course of action would just be to name that something new. Because that'd be also difficult to compare to the Stromer holotype. Um, and this concludes our history lesson. Welcome <laughs> back you. to the present. Time, whoa! Oh my god! All right, because I guess I'm the resident platus, uh, the phylogenetic pervert, I'll talk a little bit about where, where this guy goes on the tree of life. Uh, <laughs> Carcharodontosaurus saharicus um, is, get ready for this, guys. It's a Carcharodontosaur. It. <laughs> what? Wow. Um, now, what does that mean? What, 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 what is a Carcharodontosaur? Well, it's, it's a group within the larger group of what are often called carnosaurs or allosauroids. Um, and you are probably familiar with other, mem other famous members of this group, things like Acrocanthosaurus, Giganotosaurus, um, Malposaurus, Meraxes, but notably, uh, and I think, I don't see this often, but every so often I'll see Carcharodontosaurus kind of tossed in with Mopasaurus and Meraxes and Giganotosaurus. Uh, it is not actually a Giganotosaurine, which is this group that contains all these enormous, and I think exclusively South American, yes. uh, super predatory uh, um, allosaurids. Mm -hmm. Carcharodontosaurus is, I believe, just outside of that group in, in most topologies. That's what they got in Meraxes, the most recent analysis. Okay, so. cool. Um, but it is it is very similar in that it's an enormous Gondwan and murder machine. Um, now, in terms of kind of allosaurid relationships, and maybe this is something we can save more for the Metri Metriacanthus or Allosaurus video, um, because those are more early diverging members, and I think there's a little more to discuss kind of on their importance and in calibrating uh, the rest of the tree, uh, or at least the outgroup for Slurosaurus. But yeah, so this is this is a group that appears to have evolved in the late Jurassic. Um, there are some, I believe, fragmentary fossils that have been assigned to Carcharodontosaur ridae from, from the late Jurassic. It kind of rises in through, through the early Cretaceous um, and peaks, peaks, so to speak, in the middle Cretaceous, where these animals appear to be, appear to be the terrestrial predators. They are the biggest and the meanest. Um, there are Carcharodontosaurids uh, in North America, like Acrocanthosaurus in Asia. Um, I actually don't know if there are any in Europe, um, but they're in Africa and ah. South America as well. There's definitely some in Europe. There's. I mean, it could just be. I mean, I, I should clarify. I don't know if any have any. Uh, I don't know if any have been preserved in Europe. Um, I suspect that there were ones in Europe. Yeah, there's one from Portugal. Yeah. Perfect. I'm just okay. trying to remember what it is. So Venator. What? But yeah. Lusovenator? Yeah, that was uh, a that was a newer one, right? Yeah, I don't recognize the name. That was the I'll take, yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. Your that, word for that it. was that was the one that came out Yeah, it was 2020 and it was it was relatively small if memory serves. At least like and, yeah. Not And um Concavenator. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh my god, yeah. Okay, so Concavenator is very Wait, is cool. that how you guys pronounce I've always thought it was Concavenator. Is this another It doesn't matter. Scott's illiterate? Okay. This is a tomato tomato situation. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I could talk a second. So con concavenator, concavenator, however you prefer, is possibly the most interesting member of this group, in my opinion. 
Absolutely. Um, and I really hope it ends up in the game. Uh, but just in case it doesn't, it is a Spanish Cercarodontosaurid uh, from the Las Hoyas formation. We also don't have any dinosaurs from the Las Hoyas, which is a disappointment because Pelicanomimus is also very good. Um, but it's maybe like 20-ish feet long, so it's half the size of this animal, probably a little less. And it's got this wacky, like, arched spine over its hip. It mm -hmm. might have, like, attachment points for uh, quill knobs on its forearm, although some people have argued these are muscle attachment scars, and it's back and forth. Funky guy. Uh, and it's also gorgeous and complete. It's I I bet it's probably the most complete Carcharodontosaurid in that I think the whole thing is articulated, or almost quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is a very early member, and by the by the middle Cretaceous, which is not something that is widely used by geologists, but paleontologists will use because it's useful, they are the top predator, and then they apparently just kind of in the late Cretaceous, they are they decline and disappear and are replaced by Tyrannosaurus. I do not subscribe to a, a hypothesis of a replacement, though, because I think those are untenable and basically undetectable. Um, if you're more than two million years in the past but and working on large vertebrates. Said, but it is commonly said that that is what happened. Is that they yeah, it's kind of a paleo meme. Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, it's this thing that's kind of sometimes, you know, an author might say something in a paper like, this is possible, and then people read it, and then it gets a very famous example. I'm going to get on a soapbox for like two seconds. Go off, King. Romer, when writing his, his fantastic book about vertebrate life, he posits in an early chapter about the evolution of fish that there was a evolutionary arms race between armored fishes, placoderms, and snip snaps, the Eurypterids, a group that I sort of work on sometimes. But, uh, and the idea is that they're driving each other and they're getting bigger and eventually a giant armored jawed fishes outcompete uh eurypterids and that's why they decline in the uh past the early early devonian they persist in freshwater environments uh, but they're very different from the big snippy snap things like pterygotus and acutoramus there's no evidence there, there's no there's like nothing behind this and recent analyses have be, have shown that it's much more likely that this decline is a kind of habitat collapse and habitat fragmentation in marine Eurypterids. Uh, almost none of these competition exclusion hypotheses pan out when like they're actually analyzed, at least in the fossil record. That's my soapbox. The only ones that I, that have at least partially convinced me are like things related around incredibly large faunal uh, interchanges, like the Great American Biotic Interchange, where it's like, Things. Sure, maybe. Yeah. But they coexist for a long time, don't they? They do. They do. So, at least... So maybe it's, I don't know, an ice... I, I, like I said, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying that the evidence necessary to make a compelling case for it, for large, for particularly ancient large vertebrate groups, is often wanting. Honestly, I could buy it if it's a, something that's happening in the Pleistocene, because our sample's very strong, comparatively, to dinosaurs. Anyway, that's the phylogeny stunlock, and then me complaining about hypotheses like this. Do you know how many species of Eurypterids there are? Sorry, I'm back on this. More than five? Eurypterids, an invertebrate group, something that, you know, you think, like trilobites, right? Like the thousand, like so many trilobite species. There are 145 species of Eurypterids. That's it? That is it. From the from the middle Ordovician hmm. to the end of the Permian, we are missing so many, and they're basically all coming from like not all of them, but most of them are coming from this like very constrained like latitude. It's not the most reassuring. Like we have thousands of them. Like they'll die and or often molt in like mass, but like what's happening? What's going on? Why is it like that? Please somebody help me. <laughs> anyway. Well, one of the things that has always kind of permeated pretty much all depictions Ooh. of Carcharodontosaurus is the environment that it lived in. Uh, yes. In that yes, the, yes. the Bahariya formation, or Bahariya, whatever, uh, um, is, I guess, pretty notably full of absolutely enormous carnivores. Um, it's a cool place. Yeah, yeah, that there's Carcharodontosaurus, a dinosaur that is 
on par with the size estimates of T-Rex, if possibly a little plus or minus, because, hey. So we have Carcar Dentosaurus, an absolutely enormous theropod dinosaur. We have Bahariasaurus, an absolutely enormous theropod dinosaur. We have Spinosaurus, an absolutely enormous theropod dinosaur, and Sigimolastosaurus. Ooh, that's a Bahariasaurus call out for that one guy I know who's obsessed with them. I don't know who you who you are, but I know that you love them. So yeah, I hope you figure out what it is. That'd be cool. Call That'd out. be awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> currently, um, I, is Bahariasaurus one of the ones that like we we've never found anything more after it was sent to God? There's I. <laughs> I, I don't I don't want to involve myself in Bahariasaurus discourse. Okay, that's fair. There apparently are more things assigned to it than the just the Egyptian fossils. But yeah, there's Bahariasaurus is to me an enigma of such proportions that I dare not contemplate it because so many people talk about it and then like that and Delta Dromius and I just don't want to get involved. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Speaking, I mean, at least Delta Dromius has like some stuff. And speaking of enigmas, we also have uh, Sigimolastosaurus and Spinosaurus, right? And Spinosaurus. Sigim. No, there's Sigi nothing interesting to say about Spinosaurus. I, I yeah, there's there's nothing interesting to say about Spinosaurus at all. Um, <laughs> but Sigimolastosaurus, though. Now that now there's something. Is it? <laughs> Is I think they're also abelosaurs, right? I, I, Acosaurus? Uh, yeah, there, there's an albilosaur from there. And I think um, it's not huge. It's like a kind of... It's a, yeah, indeterminate medium but, size. But I mean, though. it's not just dinosaurs. There there are like huge <laughs> coelacanths. Oh, yeah. No slurosaurs, though. None that we know of. None that we know of. All right, yeah, go on. Um, Fish. Well, yeah, so so it is, it's a very wet environment. Like this is a, this is a, and I think Dalton was trying to demonstrate that. I mean, hell, we have a we have a flesh uh, flesh water Christ, a fresh. Oh. <laughs> Come on in the flesh water, folks. It's... Horror. Um, I recall. A f- hold on, a I just f- looked it up because I was curious. Apparently, there are dromaeosaur teeth that have been assigned. So, so some kind of small predators there, okay. which is completely understandable. Yeah. Um, and what would, we would expect. This is. I... There's... Yeah. Sorry, Dalton. Just, I was gonna say, I tried to make a beautiful river delta to reflect the wet environment that they would have been living in, um, and and it kind of coastal too. So we put on this island, and then none of them want to hang out by the water; they just all are wandering around on the dry bits. So maybe it, they're upland animals. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they're upland animals. Now, something that was absolutely not an upland animal that was in this environment is we do have, as I was trying to say, freshwater plesiosaurs known from here yes. as, la- as well. So, very cool, very cool, very cool. Um, and and alongside all these freshwater plesiosaurs and monstrous lungfish and coelacanths are a whole host of fun little crocs. Uh, the best Empty of which crocs. is Stomatosuchus, which is a big flat ironing board uh, attached to a crocodile. I, I think that might be my favorite fossil crocodilian. Uh, how it hunted for prey, um, it would wait for small mammals to pounce on top of it and then snap upwards, flinging them into walls or rocks, as in a cartoon. I may <laughs> gotta clarify, this is a joke. <laughs> I I love that um, that, that particular croc just decided okay. to be um, uh, convergent on all of the like toilet seat headed Temnus bondles. It's just like it's yeah. so funny looking. <laughs> I, I mean, so there's also terrestrial crocs. There's things like Hamatosuchus and Lib- Libicosuchus, I think. Um, but yeah, like, so terrestrial Notosuchians, things like you find in South America. Um, so it's a diverse enough biome. There are a few sauropods. Interestingly, there are no ornithischians. Um, That's so weird. It is weird, but the fossil record is very incomplete. Um, no, we haven't found them, which means that they weren't there. They weren't there. There were no, no ornithischians. Offline. No ornithischians. It was the ornithischian exclusion zone. It's just <laughs> theropods and sauropods all the way down. And fish. And fish. Yeah. So it's... Don't read... You know, there are signals, definitely signals in the fossil record, but it only takes one ornithischian to, to surprise us all. Mm-hmm. 
and and right? and when we mentioned sauropods as well, like they're they're not just um, like some of the smaller ones. We have like absolutely gigantic titanosaurs, Honestly. like uh, Paralotitan, which is huge, enormous. Again, wow, this this episode is full of. I don't want to get bogged down huge. in in s in weight estimates and mass estimates. I think there's stuff, some but... like fragments of pterosaurs too, right? Yeah. Oh, what the... Anyway, so yes, it's a diverse biome with all sorts of interesting creatures except weird exclusions of other creatures. In... Strange, interesting, exciting. Um, Tercarodontosaurus, I'm watching the stream. I'm curious. So I know the skull of this animal in this game has suffered some criticism. Problems, yeah. Um, yeah. In that it is kind of... Uh-oh. The stream I'm watching is frozen. But it's actually frozen in a way where I can kind of see... Oh, the hands are correct. That's nice. Hmm. Yeah, it looks very long. It's real... And, like, very tapered at the end. It's real gracile. Dalton, could you get it on the on the sunny side? Sunny side up? Yeah. Oops. Oh, Not that now, well. Now, it looks like that... It, it, at least to me, in what I can see, it looks like... The serangular, angular kind of there's there's a skull and it's a bit crushed, but like it's a, have a very tall angular and serangular. And that mm -hmm. kind of looks, yeah, it looks too it looks too it's low long. and long. Mm -hmm. They put it through the tappy machine with Mike TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, Dalton, no, it, it wasn't. It's not like Mike TV. It's the greedy German. Uh, Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. It, he he meets his fate because he's too greedy. <laughs> I guess no. It I guess Ernst Stromer would be Augustus Gloop. The metaphor doesn't work. No, yeah. I'm sorry for. Anyway, Cacarodontosaurus. Um, it's also not like the only. Yeah, like like uh, Scott said. I think there are other Cacarodontosaurs around. Well, I mean, we're on, we're on an anatomy kick at the moment here because we, we got yeah. it all paused and stuff. But um... yeah, so tall. Yeah, it's it's it looks a lot like other. It doesn't. It doesn't look robust enough. They they made no. it. Um, no. They made it weirdly gracile in I guess this game and the last game because it was a DLC creature in the last game. Um, that like it's. It's an odd one. I, I know I've talked previously about like that. I'm I'm a bit generous with my rankings on a lot of these animals, and one of my criteria is basically like, if you showed me a picture of it without a label, would I guess what it is? And honestly, for this one, I'm not sure if I would. Hold no. on, I'm completely There's... wrong. There is not mandible material beyond like a dentary fragment from this. Apparently, no. I'm thinking of a completely separate animal. I guess. <laughs> um, what I'm. I'm like I'm googling other Carcharodontosaurs just to see if it looks like them, and it doesn't. Mm -mm. There's one I I see, I and mean, there's variable reconstructions of Giganotosaurus's skull. There's one particular uh, Giganotosaurus skull, which is I believe the first one that comes up on Google Images. So whoever's editing this can can pull that up easily. That's longer, kind of in the vein of this, but I it it also still doesn't fully look like what I'm seeing in the game. Mm -hmm. The rest of the body as well is pretty gracile. It, it really does yeah. feel like it's a almost a mid-sized theropod that's been scaled up in this game. Do you think that this is done to like maybe distinguish it from Giganotosaurus? Could be. Because the one in Operation Genesis does not look gracile. It's no. a big it's a bruiser. The the one in Operation Genesis is pretty spot on, if memory serves. It's also just it looks mean. Mm -hmm. It looks like a like a mean animal, yeah. I do, kind of, man. I do kind of like those weird blue scales over its eyes, though. I I really like some of the patterns they give it, like blues and reds and stuff. And I also I I don't hate the iguana spikes. Yeah, do I... we want to talk design choices? Yeah, let's. Because yeah. it doesn't seem like we have that much more to talk about, like the placement of this animal or the environment or anything besides the Not fact really, that no. like. It's just it. It's strange. Well, there's, that there's so I many. I mean, there is carnivores. another species, as we kind of alluded to. Yes. Where's that other species from? Iguodensis. Uh, um. 
so there's Saharicus, and I think the other is from. Uh, the Ekhar, and I don't know. Niger. Okay. Oh, Niger. Oh, so the Ekhar. We could, yeah. We could put Noronosaurus in there with it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's got Rugops. It's got. It's got Caprasuchus. Oh, Caprasuchus. Caprasuchus, a good crocodile. Well, we can talk about this more when we talk about Aranosaurus. But well, it's not. That's not where Aranosaurus is from, though. Unfortunately, it's not. Oh, apparently I'm so not. confused. I jumped the gun because I knew that Aranosaurus is from Niger, but I. Uh, it's from the. El apparently, Ross. Spinosaurus occurs there too. Um, yeah, let's talk about design. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about design. I guess. What are people's thoughts? Uh, did we say that Kakaradon? Like, yeah, yeah. Its ma- name means like shark tooth lizard, but like, the carcara is like a allusion to the great white shark, which mm-hmm. I think is what is that species? What's the genus? Carcaridon carcaricles. Oh Jesus! Yes, Carcaridon carcarius. Carcarius, Jesus. Say it again, Dalton. I talked over you with the wrong thing. Oh. <laughs> Carcaridon carcarius. That's a good name. That's a very good name. It is. Is that is that a Linnaeus? It might be. That one slaps. That one's got poetry to it. Also, Amelia, is no, there anything not... that you want to talk about in this? Because I, I've noticed that you've said, like, literally two words outside of your name. <laughs> yeah. I don't really have anything to say about it. I know nothing about it other than what its name means and that it's from Africa. Okay. That's, that's like, all I can contribute. The only thing I can think of is I don't know if we exactly said why its teeth look like shark teeth or, like, why... Yeah, the, I don't that it is the way it is. I don't get that. Don't once... well because at the time, at, at the time it was found, had anything else besides like Megalosaurus been found with those giant like the like so Carcharodontosaurus Car- teeth are like really flat and like really really serrated. Like you can like it's really obvious, and so like they do kind of look like shark teeth, but like steak shaped, steak knife shaped. And I don't know what question. like. When this thing was found, like I don't know, was it was it found before or after T Rex? That's another a- good after point of reference. After after, well, but even it, then, like nineteen twenty five. Yeah. So after, okay, it was found in nineteen fourteen, but yeah, described in twenty five. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. But even like point. Rex teeth, like aren't that flat? Like these no, guys, like, like they do literally just look like yeah. These guys, like the teeth, literally look like steak knives, mm-hmm. except they're serrated on both sides, mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have a I have a cast tooth of a Carcharodontosaurus, but I don't have it with me. I might have it with me. I don't think I have it with me. I think we it's could talk home, about but... tooth no. No tooth and oh. The serrations are along what are called parent, which are ridges. Isn't this exciting? And there's a no. whole different kind of terminology for what the front and back is called. I love no, it. Mesial, ling- lingual, and Ugh. No, no, no. That's not front and back. That's tongue side and cheek no, side. No, yes, yeah. I, I realize. Okay. I, I, I subscribe to just saying anterior, posterior, lateral, and medial because yeah. they work just fine. Yeah, I do too. Uh, Amelia, mosasaurs, they have serrated teeth, right? Some of them do. Not all. Okay. Most of them don't, and the ones that do, they're nowhere near as obvious as mm. these guys. Interesting. Like. I don't know. So, like, some tylosaurs have, like, very, very, very slightly serrated. So, like, sometimes a different word is used. Sometimes they're called crenulated instead of serrated. Okay. And it's, like, it's really, it's really, really fine. Like, you do have to look under a microscope or touch it to tell if they're there. Versus, like, prognathodon. Like, prognathodon starts to get to the point. Like, they're still not as well defined as, like, a, like a theropod tooth. But they're, you can see them without touching them. Hmm. But no, most of them aren't but also most lizard teeth aren't serrated yeah no no yeah Piranus, yeah right? yeah yeah that's is, is i bet there's some other or just komodo dragons i don't know so i mean like his procs ancestrally like sudasukians have serrated teeth yeah some yeah yeah, some cool have serrated teeth. and actually that's funny because i, I think some philatosukians have what are, are called crenulated teeth Mm-hmm. After like mosasaurs, which is interesting. Yeah, and I, I guess... can't remember. I think I saw a note somewhere. I think it's it might have been Cope, who 
made up that word or first used it for Mosasaurs. I don't remember. Damn. We're such Document an anti-cope group that is, when, he, when he erects a new word, our gut, our gut is like, yeah, he yeah. made it up. What a f***ing idiot. <laughs> <laughs> who, who needs this word? Make, yeah, oh, I can make up words to cope. Like, eugenics. Oh, no, he already made that word up. He did not invent eugenics. But he was a cut weirdo who did like eugenics. He wasn't cucked. He cucked I was about Mark. to say, he wasn't cucked. He died of a no, UTI. No, yeah, it doesn't work. He does. <laughs> he was a weirdo eugenicist, but no, he was not a... He was not a cuckold. He did ob ob objectively and demonstrably <laughs> and terminally f <laughs> Um... I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I really don't like the iguana spikes. And I also, <laughs> beyond the iguana spikes... The stupid unicorn horn is so dumb. You zoom in on it. The unicorn horn always throws me. Like I'm, it's I'm not my fine. favorite. I'm fine with the iguana spikes, and then it has a unicorn horn, and I, I like it a whole lot less. I just don't like this at all. Why are you there? I well, like, like I like the spiky. I like the bumpities. I like the bumpities. I don't mind the dorsal row of like iguana scales. But yeah, that iguana, that that unicorn horn is it's so dumb. not doing it for me, champ. I do like that the the spikes are very obviously soft tissue spikes yeah. because like if you look down the back, they do the iguana thing where they're all like leaning off to different sides. When this one mm -hmm. is running no, that's like an cool. idiot, it's about to murder this goat. That's pretty. There you go. I like Delish. its social animation that's done a couple times. Well, they just like wrestle. Yeah. I should clarify too. I don't dislike the the iguana spikes from like a scientific point of view. I don't think they're either reasonable or unreasonable. I think it's a fine piece of speculative paleo art. I just aesthetically don't like them on this particular model. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, it eating the goat just reminded me. Wasn't there that study a bit ago that was uh, centered around that like Bob Nichols? Uh, reconstruction of like two of them picking up a sauropod. Oh yeah, that they could carry like they could pick up a, a pretty substantial amount of weight, right? Yeah, that's honestly. And now I'm thinking about that art. That art also is very cool. It is cool. Um, it's a really that, cool piece. I'm, it reminds me. There's I think another piece of art. I don't know. I do not remember what the the theropod was, but it's a sarcosuchus and a theropod, each pulling at a. Uh, Maybe it's not. Actually, no, this might have been in a documentary. I don't remember. But it's a sarcosuchus and, and some kind of large theropod each pulling at different ends of a sauropod. Hmm. And it's I mean, similarly, probably... like, kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think I... I think this is from that, uh, one, the, the documentary that's on Curiosity Stream. Because mm. they do a lot of, uh, it has Spinosaurus and, and other yeah. stuff in it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I just, so that art's great, and it's you know, violent and cool, but also you can see on the Carcharodontosaurus, uh, they've given it little like primaries on its forearms. Have they? Hmm. Oh yeah, they have. Oh yes. goodness. So cool. dedicated viewer, you may remember earlier in the video, refer to earlier in the video, where I say uh, about con Concavenator and that it has possible attachment points on its ulna for quills or some kind of feather. Uh, I think that's probably what inspired it. I think it's worth saying that I don't think, you know, I can't prove this, but I, I would be surprised if if they are feathers attaching to the forearm, if they are primaries like that, like pinaceous feathers, this would be a little early for that. Maybe they could be quills, they could be something else. I don't know, maybe the muscle attachment, but that's, it seems that's probably what inspired the art, which is cool because it's a cool piece of art. I frequently see them depicted as more quilly. Quilly? Yeah. Yeah, I buy it. Yeah. I'd buy that for a dollar. So do we have anything more to say about this critter, or should we take it over to the species view? I have exhausted my knowledge of this. <laughs> All right. Um, let's... let's... Oh. The yeah. dumb thing. That feels very reptilian, the way they're doing that. I like that a lot. Right. What was the animation? I didn't see. I turned they kind away. of shove, they shove against each other. I do like, I do like a good shove. Let's take it to the species viewer. Yeah. I also want to go to the species viewer 
because I really want to see other color options. The randomizer really gave us some garbage. It really yeah, did. Do you think we could like recreate or, or approximate the OG color scheme? I'll try. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to find which one is my favorite because I have it written down. Because I do think like the one that we were follow that I tried to follow a lot with the blue. I really liked that. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dalton, you said that you hated it and thought it was stupid. Yeah, I definitely I said that. All right. That's really nice. This is like red and black is cool. It has get- some really really pretty base colors, and then a yeah. lot of the the patterns are pretty unremarkable. That's kind of approximate, I get, because it's it's black on top and red on bottom in, Gen- in Operation Genesis, right? It's like black with a red head. I thought it's it, it's it's more like the 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 walking with dinosaurs Allosaurus. That yes. it's black on top, yeah. white on the bottom, gotcha. red crests. Mm-hmm. So cool. The canonical only coloration for Allosaurus. Yeah. I know it, it was it was mentioned in the our thirtieth anniversary Jurassic Park special link on screen right now um but that every once in a while like certain depictions of animals become like the canon representation of that animal that coloration for allosaurus will always just be how allosaurus looked i don't care if the walking with dinosaurs model looks busted in a lot interesting of we'll say <laughs> it, they made choices but man they everybody's hit so creative <laughs> <laughs> they hit it out of the park with that color scheme and those sounds yeah. yeah. They got the hands right on this. They did. Yeah. yeah. This one has good hands. Alrighty. So, kicking us off, Amelia. I'm torn because I kind of don't like it. I want to like it, but in my heart, I know that the Giga is so much better. It's like, like not even funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. Now, like, this color helps a lot, because the ones that we had in the park were all kind of blah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't... It, it's not doing it. I don't know why. I don't know how to articulate it. it. I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. I just can't... There's nothing to say other than it's kind of boring somehow. I don't know. I don't... I, I don't like it, but I don't hate it. I think... That's... For me, it's gonna it's gonna be a B. It reminds me of the Triceratops, right? Like I know what it's supposed to be. I could probably guess what it would what it's supposed to be, but it's not the best that it could be. <laughs> that is, um, is that higher than Trike? No, no, no. No, Trike is B. Trike, I Trike's B. Never mind. I was I was yeah. reading it wrong. B is fair. Um, oh, it, this is where Jimbo would have his. Hold on, I'll summon. A B. B. He's speaking from the depths where I've consumed him. Yes, he said he felt this was a B design. That's fair. Um, I might go a little uncharacteristically harsh, and I might put it in C. Um, Ooh, he's a bad boy. Absolutely. Uh, I... The more I look at it, the less I enjoy it. Um, I love its sounds, and I think the iguana spikes are fun. I will be 100% honest with you guys. The entire time this thing has been walking on the screen, I've been doing nothing but staring at its <laughs> unicorn horn, and <laughs> I, it will not leave my vision, and I hate it so much. Like, the skull's busted, Um it's it's a bit gracile like yeah yeah it's it it doesn't look like carcharodontosaurus enough for me um yeah let's see alex you i'm thinking i like the sounds and i like the patterning but yeah i the head every time i look at the head it looks like it's like been rent like C, I'm going to say it's a C. What do we have in C currently right now? Hoyangosaurus, Diplodocus, the Jurassic World, Velociraptor, yeah, that feels, and... I, I feel good knowing uh, this. Struthiomimus. Yeah. What do we have in D right now? Um, that'd be Archaeornithomimus and uh, Camarasaurus. Okay. 
this as a representation of Carcharodontosaurus, I would give this a D. I don't think it does a good job portraying the animal. It doesn't look correct. The proportions are weird. It's it's built wrong. Um, as a design, I don't think I dislike it as much as I dislike like the Camarasaurus. I do like the patterns. I do like the sounds. I don't like the iguana spikes. I don't like the horn. It's got enough going for it to not put it in D for me, but it's mm. yeah, it's going to be C, C for Carcharodontosaurus. Oh yeah, there, there we go. It. The C's have it. C's have it, and I'll flip over, and I'll put it in C tier. Also, yeah. dedicated viewers, y'all have disappointed me. All you guys. For or a large portion of you guys commented for a while of how we screwed up that the Jurassic World uh, that the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park Velociraptors were in the wrong space on our tier list here, and I've seen absolutely zero comments that we haven't had Notosaurus on the tier list since episode sixteen because we forgot. <laughs> naughty, naughty viewers, guys are slipping. Hello, it's James. I don't mean to startle anyone, but we had uh, some issues with the footage that we recorded uh, when we did this episode, and uh, Amelia is not able to be here today, so I'm filling in for the role of Amelia for the end of this video. Uh, it's good to be a part of it for as little time as I am. Um, are we ready to spin the wheel? Spin I'm certainly the ready. The wheel! Ooh. Oh. Uh -huh. hey. Okay. Oh, this is going to be right. fun. Yeah. All right, guys. So tune in next week uh, so that you can see us talk about Amargosaurus. Uh, we're certainly not about to record that video. No. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bye. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Don't ask to see behind the curtain. Um, yeah, so Amargosaurus, it's a cool sauropod. We've done sauropods before, but we haven't done this sauropod before, so you should all watch. That's it for this video. Please remember that if you like the kinds of videos we make, you should show that by liking the videos that we make. Uh, you should also comment on these videos because it really helps us in the algorithm, and we want to hear what you think. We want to hear, you know, what you want to see more of, what parts you thought were funny, which member of the skeleton crew you think we should throw into a volcano. And why it's Alex. Why it's Alex. I would survive. <laughs> it would reject him. Fair. He's built Ford tough. If you are a real fan of the channel and you want to support us a little bit extra, uh, we are pleased to say that we have just opened up a Patreon page. Um, as of recording this, the page has only been active for a few days, and we are nearing $400 of monthly support for what we do, which is absolutely astounding. Um, we are, as always, so, so grateful to our community for all the support you give us, uh, and we really couldn't do any of this stuff without you. So if you join our Patreon, you'll gain access to a range of patron benefits, ranging from access to a community Discord server, uh, all the way to getting your name shouted out at the end of all these videos. This is for patrons of the Gorgosaurus tier or higher, and in this video, we have five people to shout out. In no particular order, these are Benjamin Seipser, Philip Fico, Florida Man, Mercury Adamolos, and Wheat. Thank you all. Thank you. I'm sorry, Thank I'm going to say and viewer. Wheat at the end of every video now. And um, Wheat. And Wheat. Thanks, Wheat. We appreciate Wheat. Thank you, Wheat. Thank God I don't eat gluten-free anymore. So, thank you again. This is pretty bad. If, yeah, gluten's great. Thank you guys again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. So this yeah. is the Skeleton Crew signing off. Bye, everybody.